Okay, so today we're gonna to look at the Athern Ready to Roll Ekonami BNSF livery SD40-2, and then in parentheses here it says SD39-2. I'm sure that has to indicate there's probably a slight difference between the two. I am not an expert on trains in real life, but um, this is the first DCC sound-enabled locomotive that I've had on my layout. Now, I always said I would never get into sound and then you know, decided I'd you know, pick one up because I got a good deal on these. And, uh, and you know what, it really brings uh, a, a really nice dynamic uh, to your layout, especially if you have a small layout, and even more so if you have younger kids that you're trying to get into uh, model railroading, uh, this really kind of gets their attention. So um, if you're not familiar with um, Athern's lines, they've got three. They've got Roundhouse, Ready to Roll, and Genesis, and they've kind of switched things up a little bit over the years, which made it a little confusing for me when I was first looking into these. And the Roundhouse, is essentially their uh, entry-level uh, trains and uh, they're great for younger kids or maybe somebody on a, on a budget layout where there's not as many details um, that might be broken say you know like the little um, you know handrails on the side here um, they're ready to roll is their mid-grade and then their Genesis is their uh, their premium line with uh, you know premium details and a premium price. So the ready to roll, if you've ever used or you know been to a train swap meet or eBay and you've had a Proto 2000 model, um, that's what these remind me of. They're very similar to the Proto 2000s in detail. Now granted some Proto 2000s uh, have a little bit more detail and there's always exceptions to the rules, uh, but that was the first thing I thought of um, when I um, when I pick this up. So let's go through the sound. After I've gone through the sounds, I'll show you some of the uh, decoder functions, the lights, the LEDs, and then finally some of the details that I noticed on this model, uh, which make it uh, just uh, such an awesome uh, model train for the price. You, I think they're listed at about 180 to 200, but um, you can find them from different retailers, uh, anywhere from 125 to 150 bucks. And um, you know, you're getting a DCC equipped locomotive with the sound itself. Pretty hard to beat that price. So, okay, so most of the Economy logos come with about 10 or 15 sounds, it looks like. And uh, I'll go ahead and we'll look at the startup sound first. Uh, the way you activate the startup sound, uh, if you don't have a sound uh, enabled locomotive, is you just put it on speed step one and take it back to zero, and that sort of uh, kicks it into gear. So, we'll go ahead and do that. Now, if you let it sit idle on your, your layout for, say, a minute or two, there's a couple extra sounds that you hear. One of them is uh, the poppet valve that goes off, you know, every 10, 15 seconds. And it's, it seems to have three different sounds. You'll hear a single poppet, uh, then followed by two, and then three. And then once in a while, and I haven't quite figured out when, an air compressor turns on, which is kind of a nice attention to detail. So if you happen to be reading your manual, and this is in the background, you hear different sounds as it sits there at, uh, at idle. So I'll go ahead and uh, be quiet for a second so you can listen to some of that. Okay, so there are a number of different sounds. The first is, well, let's, let's take a listen to the bell here. And the horn. Short horn. And then uh, we'll listen to it as it speeds up and slows down uh, when we move forward and backwards.
Okay, so we'll turn the bell off. A couple other features, it has uh, dynamic brakes. And then finally, brake set and release. Now, let me go ahead and enable the brake, and then I'll let it go forward, and you, you can kind of hear the brakes on. We'll go ahead and take the brakes off. So what's kind of nice about that is if you're running uh, your loco down the layout, you're doing speed step 30, and you know you're going to stop at a station soon, you can enable the brakes, bring it down to speed step zero, and it'll automatically turn off. And then before leaving from the station or the yard, whatever, um, you can take that uh, take that off, and you'll hear the compressor uh, release the uh, the air as the brakes uh, come off the wheels. So a couple other sounds here. Uh, we got couple and uncouple, so I'll go ahead and do that. We got all aboard. I don't know if anybody even says it anymore, but I know the kids like it. And then F26 and F27 allow you to rev the engine motor up and down. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so you can hear a full spectrum uh, of each, uh, each stage the engine goes through as you take the loco from its lowest to highest speed. And we'll bring it back down again. There we go, and we're back at idle. Now, one thing you note is you have uh, control over it. There's a mixer built into the sound decoder. So you have control over the total volume, and then if there are individual components uh, that you want to adjust um, the volume of, you can do that through uh, various CV settings. So for example, um, I had a hard time hearing the, the poppet valve and the air compressor, and so I was able to adjust that just slightly. Uh, you know, it's a preference thing, but you can, you can adjust those as you want. And if you get a phone call, uh, you can hit uh, 8 on your controller, and that will uh, mute the loco. So now that we've uh, had a look at the sounds, let's go ahead and look at some of the LED functions uh, that this model comes with. Now, this is, um, I'll show you a comparison in a second. Where did I put the box here? Um, not all of the SD40-2s, uh, I think it's the SD39-2 that have the ditch light, so some of the Atheron models don't have those. Um, but they all seem to have this little warning beacon, so we'll go ahead and turn that on, uh, which my kids think is awesome. Uh, we'll turn on the primary headlight and the ditch lights. Uh, the primary headlight, you can dim it down uh, using function 7. Uh, I'm, that's on the NCE uh, controller. It might be different if you have Digitrax. Um, one thing I want to point out, two things actually. On camera, the LEDs, while they're pretty bright uh, in real life, on camera, they, the, the camera really se seems to emphasize that. Uh, it's not this unrealistically bright when you have it on your layout. The second thing is, is the sound from the locomotive um, sounds ridiculously loud uh, on camera, almost as if it was put in post-production. That's not the case. Uh, when you're actually sitting next to it, it's not too bad. And again, if it, you, know, you find it too loud, it's really easy uh, to drop the volume down, which I usually have to do after my wife's listened to the trains for four hours. I don't have to drop the volume down a little bit. So um, in any case, um, these LEDs here, although it doesn't show up on camera, when you are um, 
looking at it in real life, the ditch lights have almost a golden tone to them. When you're looking at it head on, they look relatively the same, but from the side it has sort of a yellowish golden tone uh, on both of them. That's the same for the, uh, the rear ditch lights. Um, for me, I actually think it looks cool, but I know there's some people that are really particular about prototypical, um, you know, prototypical model uh, trains, so that may be something of importance to you. You know what? Here's something. Let me get my pointer, because I had to run to the hobby store, because I had a real issue uh, with the couplers that came on these. Give me just a second. Okay, so I've gone ahead and flipped this model around, and, you know... <laughs> Uh, it's probably my layout now I know some you know some guys uh, you know gals uh, have plenty of room to make these massive layoffs uh, layouts with these you know uh, nice smooth curves and because of the limited amount of space I have I have tight curves so this is easy track that's been ballasted over and so you know on some steam locomotives uh, you know you'll face issues when going around tight curves but on this guy what surprised me is the coupler has a really limited back and forth function or excuse me left and right function and so what happens is is on some of my rolling stocks specifically my atlas um, I forget what they call it but it's their premium line um, rolling socks king something I think it's called um, when I was using that the uh, rolling stock uh, kept derailing so I thought okay you know there's an issue with my track and I checked it with an MR, uh, NMRA gauge and it was fine what I realized was is because this doesn't move enough one way or the other when you're coming around a curve it causes the freight uh, the rolling stock to lift on one side and as it comes out of the curve, it'll come off the track. So, um, you know, maybe somebody has a better solution out there because I've never actually experienced this problem before. But what I did is I went to the hobby store and picked up some Bachman EasyMate couplers that were long rather than what I think is a medium that comes with it. So I switched those out, and that seems to have solved the problem for me. So if you run into that and your stock, uh, rolling stock keeps disconnecting with these, uh, maybe just put on a longer... Um, you know, longer knuckle, knuckle coupler here. And that seems to have done the trick. You know, maybe it's not as prototypical, but uh, I don't think anybody's noticing and I'm not a, uh, I'm not a museum. So let's look at the, uh, now that we have the locomotive flipped around, let's look at the rear lights here. So I'll go ahead and switch the direction, get the headlights back on. Now, one thing that's kind of interesting, and maybe this is a decoder limitation, is that when you have it in reverse, uh, you cannot uh, control the primary light and the ditch light separately. Um, so when it's moving forward, you can turn those on and off, you know, however you like. But for some reason, when you do it reverse, they all turn on. To me, not a big deal. I mean, especially when it's uh, nighttime, I think it looks really cool when I'm running my layout. Uh, but I know some, you know, people that have uh, prototypical standards may find that to be uh, a problem. Maybe not, uh, but at least uh, at least worth mentioning. So that about covers it. Let me just um, show you some of the detail here. I'm not a, you know, I'm not an expert reviewer, but I'll just kind of go over some things that I found to be cool. So I know that on like I think it's Walther's middle uh, line products, you tend not to get the little handrails here. So I've always picked up Proto 2000 units, the older ones, because it fit my budget. They have great detail. And, uh, you know, I like that they had the little handrails, which Walther's doesn't have. Um, Athern's uh, product line, they're ready to roll, does have these little handrails. And while I know there are models out there that are have, you know, far more detail than this, uh, and in some cases, just incredible levels of detail. I think for the price, it's pretty cool. I mean, they've got the individual painted handles here. Um, you know, this is, you know, these little guys move around. They're not molded on the little, uh, I think they're brake cables or something. And uh, and even in the, the top, in fact, let me just take this off for you, off for here. One quick tip. If you take this guy off, be careful, because this, uh, this is like a little access cab. Actually, you know what? That's what I wanted to show you. Take a look, and it has the little fans inside. Let me just unlock the focus here. It has these little fans inside, and so when you're looking at them from above, it looks really, really cool. In fact, the rear ones have more white to it. And, uh, you know, I'm not, like I said, I'm not an expert reviewer here, but just how far these things have come since I was a kid, uh, it's just incredible the detail they can get into these. Uh, <coughs> let me just, just flip this around again. You'll see that it looks like I've accidentally popped this off, so I'll put this little guy back in. It's not broken or anything. It's just... When you handle these, there's no real good spot. I don't know how the Genesis guys do it. Maybe they have a layout where they just leave them on there. Um, but it's really tricky to move this without touching the, de the finer details. So 
Um, I usually grab it by the fuel tank, but in any case, they pop right back in. I haven't had anything permanent damage, so let me go ahead and I'm going to switch this to uh, this track right here, and I'll show you some of the, the details on the front. Okay, so you can see here on the side, um, they've got like a little windshield wiper here in the back window. Um, this window actually moves, um, which maybe you guys are just used to this, but that really blows my mind. I mean, I have so much respect for the people that put these things together. Um, I just don't know how they do it. But the little windows uh, open and close. Um, you've got this little flap here, this little wind flap that's been put on. And then even the handrails here, um, you know, on the, uh, the the front body of the Loco. You've got the little, um, you know, hazard light up here that, of course, is functioning. And just some other, you know, painted details. Uh, even, you know, like the little fuel cap down here is painted red. And there's some little warnings, which, you know, my eyes can't really read what that says. But, I mean, to me, you know, when you're in a price range around 150 to 200 which I believe is what these retail for, but they tend to be cheaper in your local hobby store. Um, you know, that's just, that's an, that's an incredible amount of detail. I, I, I'll definitely pick some more of these guys up. Let me go ahead and put this on a piece of paper here so I don't damage it. So on the front, we've got these little, um, I think these are brake line cables. I know there's some train nerds out here just yelling at the screen. Um, but uh, these are not molded, you know, they actually move, so you got to be a little careful when you're moving this thing around. You know, we've got the individually attached LEDs, the chain here, and then some more, um, some more of these little hand railings uh, around the logo. And again, I only expected that kind of stuff, you know, on your Proto series, things like that. So it's pretty impressive, pretty impressive really for the, uh, for the price. So again, you can see from me handling it, these little, these little things pop off real easy. but. I'll show you on cam. I'm not going to redo the video here. Let's pop them right back in. Just in case you're worried you're going to have issues, it's really easy to put them in. So typically what I'll do is I'll run it on the layout. And when I'm not doing a review or something like that, um, you know, these go up in a shelf. I don't tend to bring them in and out of a box because it's just uh, risks getting damaged. And uh, yeah, so I think that about covers it. So uh, hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully this is helpful. I really recommend, um, you know, picking up uh, any of the ready to roll products. And uh, again, on their website, the prices tend to be a little bit high, but your local hobby store uh, should be able to get you a, a pretty good discount. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.